Hello there. Welcome back to the booth here at Mythic Championship 2 from London. I'm Marshall Cycliff. That's Paul Chion. And it is our great pleasure to bring you coverage of the booster draft. Oof. We're here early morning. Of course, this is the uh, this is the time when the players are the most tense. Uh, all the hard work has been done of preparing for a tournament, and now they have to sit down and put that knowledge to work. Yeah, and absolutely. And coming into this tournament specifically with War of the Spark booster draft not really being available, these players are a lot of these players. It's going to be their first time drafting the format. So you know, oftentimes you can say coming into an event, you know, I've put in the time and I'm prepared. I'm ready for this draft. But right now it's like. Man, you know, if there's this good uncommon planeswalker and like the best removal spell in, in common, what am I supposed to take? Like, I don't know which one to right. take. What should I do? A lot yeah. of uncertainty. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I mean, it's reflected across the board as well. Normally, I'll go around and ask the players, what do you think of the format? And usually I get just an avalanche of opinions. Oh, this is what you want to be doing. You don't want to do that. Yeah. And then I'll go to another team and ask somebody else. Here, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, What's the best color? I, I think it's red. I think it's blue. Ooh, is that Tulsimir right at the front of the pack here for Paulo Vitor Domitorosa? That, of course, is who we're going to watch. Not a Planeswalker, but a heck of a rare here. Yeah, one of the strongest rares in the set. But as you can see, a lot of power here. We have Prison Realm, which is you know one of the best removal effects in the format, and it's a monocolored card. And then, of course, Obnixilis' Cruelty, part of a cycle of some of you know more powerful pushed common removal effects as well. But... Uh, I mean, Tulsimir seems like one of those cards that might be a little too strong to, to pass up on here. Yeah, I think Paul is just going to have to take a gamble here. Oftentimes, the pro players would be a little bit reticent to take a gold card first since it gives you a lower percent chance of actually getting to play it in your deck. But boy, it is worth it here for Tulsimir. Just a fantastic card. You can check it out on the right-hand side of your screen there. And uh, yeah, we know you're probably not as used to these cards yet either. Heck, we aren't even in the booth. <laughs> I've only got a couple of drafts. Paul, normally right. I do a lot of, well, I like to call it work research but yeah yeah you know tw sure. 20 drafts or 25 drafts before i get in the booth here at the mythic championship level but me i've got about one <laughs> in, you know <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're gonna be learning right alongside you uh throughout the course of the day one thing you will notice if you're relatively new to drafting this set here is that uh there is a planeswalker in every pack it was teo in the previous pack not one of the more powerful uncommon planeswalkers but uh looks like the planeswalker is missing from this set no i'm wrong it was jian yangu there in yeah the jian yangu a uh, lot of lot of decent options here. One of the best cards uh, in the pack being Rouse Outburst. Yeah. You know, four mana removal spell dealing three damage and then allowing you to choose one of the top two cards of your library and put one of them into your hand and one into your graveyard. However, Paulo did start out with a green white card, so he might consider taking the Jiang Yanggu because you know it is on color. He did already take that Tulsimir first pick. There's also Spark Harvest, which is a strong removal effect, but I think it looks like Paulo is just deciding between you know just taking the best card in the pack in probably the Rouse Outburst or yeah. just taking the Jiang Yang. And, you know, I know that some of the players have experimented with four and five color decks. Now, if we're used to drafting the prior two sets, we're used to having a whole lot of gates and that kind of thing isn't here. But the green cards do give you the opportunity to splash with some really powerful mana fixing in green. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you do want to delve into three or four colors, green is where you want to be. There's multiple commons and even uncommons that give you really good mana fixing. Cards like New Horizons and Centaur Nurturer, along with even Paradise Druid at Uncommon, just gives you the tools to really go three or four colors. There's a Dreadhorde Arcanist as the rare pulled to the front of the pack here for Paulo. He did take Jiang Yang Gu, and what that means is, you know, that's one of the cards we were just talking about, right? right. Jiang Yang Gu also allows you to uh, splash around. Now, it's not quite as direct, but it does do it. But yeah. red cards are the cards that Paulo's looking at here, and he's going to take that Arcanist. Ooh, nice. And, you know, Arcanist, the type of card, if you have the ability to make it larger, you know, Th that really puts it over the top. Getting that second power means that you can start getting back two, uh, two uh, sorry, c uh, spells with converted mana cost two back. So, for example, if you have something like Ajaya's Greeting, for, uh, you can get that spell back. And, yeah. you know, it does pair very nicely with that Jiang Yang Gu that he took in the previous pack. Yeah, this is getting kind of interesting, though, because now here's Watley's Raptor. And, you know, what I think happened is, is Paulo probably said, well, the blue-red deck is open. I just got a Rouse Outburst passed to me, and now I got that <coughs> Dreadhorde guy. And he's probably thinking, well, maybe I'll dabble away from Tulsimir, but boom, there's Watley's Raptor. Maybe pulled right back in again. Yeah, but there were also Dreadhorde twins. And if he mm. did want to go into something like, you know, Red X, Red Blue, Blue or red green. Dreadhorde Twins is a fine card in any deck because you know it is a four mana two two, and when it enters battlefield, it amasses two. So those are just pretty good stats overall for 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 any card in limited. And it does look like he's kind of veered back, and we very well could see a red splash out of the uh, white green deck that he's got going. He's got Enforcer Griffin pulled to the front. 
Iron Bully. Oh, but there's a Centaur Nurturer. So it looks like if Paulo does feel like he wants to branch out, he could do so. Yeah, this is Colors this is wise. tough. A lot, a lot of different options here, and Paulo still, you know, even even right now, one of the biggest things too, when you draft a format a ton, one of the things that you kind of figure out is what are the open colors. But that only happens, I think, through repetition and doing a ton of drafts. So sometimes it's not clear that what's open, right? Paulo is like, well, I saw some blue-red spells cards, but then I see Hualtley's Raptor. Am I supposed to stay green-white, yeah. or should I delve into a bunch of other colors? All right, let's see what Paulo has here. It looks like a lot of red and blue spells left uh, in this pack. Not a whole ton in green. The Centaur Nurturer number two. Yeah. Sure. Centaur Nurture can be kind of that backup plan. It's like, all right, this deck, you know, the green-white proliferate deck is a very strong deck, one of the stronger archetypes, I feel. But if it doesn't go exactly according to plan, you can just start taking a bunch of these green mana fixers and just take the most powerful card uh, in each color. Many of the gold cards in this format are extremely powerful. So if you do have that flexibility, again, taking cards like the Nurture, Mana Geode, New Horizons, just gives you that flexibility of, you know, if you do happen to open something like a Roalesk or, or whatever, you can just splash those cards. Rising Populace pulled to the front here, but there's also an Arlen's Wolf at the back of the pack. That looks like a solid pickup here for Paulo. Yeah, just a solid three-mana creature. It's got a little bit of evasion attached to it. Normally, of course, three-mana, three-two not being a very strong rate. However, also keep in mind, Paulo does have Tulsimir. There, there is a little bit of wolf synergy there. Tulsimir Friend to Wolves says that when you do play, uh, when a wolf enters a battlefield, you can't gain three to life and, ha and shoot, have that wolf fight another creature. You'd think that that would put it over the top of the, uh, uh, when it, between Rising Populace and the Wolf, but it looks like Paulo disagrees and takes the Rising Populace instead. Yeah, I think, I think Paulo putting a heavier emphasis on just being able to put plus one, plus one counters on his creatures. I think the best version of a green-white deck is a deck that's able to kind of distribute counters around and then uh, abuse the proliferate mechanic to just kind of snowball the battlefield. I think, you know, I think coming into this, coming into this format, a lot of people would probably be thinking, look, you know, this format's probably going to be slower, which is true, but it's not, you know, a, a super slow grindy format. You still need to put pressure, you need to put creatures onto the battlefield because of decks like the green-white proliferate deck that goes two drop, three drop, bloom hulk, and then all of a sudden you're like, what am I doing with my life? Snare Spinner picked up kind of late in the pack as Paulo kind of fills things out. Nothing super insane jumping out. Yeah, Prismite, just a curve filler, something you're not especially happy putting into your deck. But, you know, if you are splashing, you could use it as a kind of a bad mana fixer. Oh, wow. Okay. Two, there was an Invade the City two picks ago, and now another one here. Uh, you know, Invade the City, uh, a fine uncommon, but not super powerful. It's a payoff for the blue-red spells deck. Right. But even then, it's not, you know, like some insane bomb or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 when you do see it that late, it might be signaling that maybe that archetype is open. Um, but yes, Invite the City, it's really only at its best if, you if you're really going super deep into that spell's archetype. You need something like 12 spells for that card to actually be good. Iron Bully, second to last here. And you never know, an Iron Bully can make the, the cut. And as you mentioned before, uh, it can go well in this uh, Proliferate deck because it does put a counter on a creature, and it has Menace itself. Yeah, I mean, normally a 3-mana, 2-2 two, two Menace, not the, not the best rate for a creature. But if you just have any any way to put that additional counter, then all of a sudden you have a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three Menace creature, which is a great rate. Yeah, that card is one, one, as is often the case, a plus one, plus one away from v being very, very good. It's right. a huge difference. I think that uh, a lot of times people see uh, plus one, plus one counter and view it as a minor effect. Um, when you're playing limited where it's heavily creature-based, a plus one, plus one counter is actually quite a big deal. Like, yeah. just proliferating one counter is, like, that can be a board game, uh, a board state swinging effect. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of just the most important things uh, – you know, when you're drafting green white deck, is finding the way to put that first plus one plus one counter yes. in one of your cards because then cards like Bloom Hulk become effectively a four mana five five, right? Yeah. And that's huge coming out of common. And if you can't get that counter and then you have something that proliferates, you're losing out on a ton of value there. That's right. Paulo also has a copy of Hwatley's Raptor, which will get him a proliferate uh, kind of, you know, for free. And mm -hmm. let's not forget that he does have Jiang Yangu, which lets him turn those creatures, like even that Iron Bully, into mana creatures. Yeah, Jiang Yangu is just phenomenal with proliferate. 
Not only does it allow you to kind of ramp up your creatures, all your creatures tap for mana, but of course, when you proliferate, you can also put counters onto Planeswalkers mm -hmm. as well. Keep it rolling. So yeah, Apollo very much looking down the line here of a green-white proliferate deck. What does he have here for pack well, two, I saw pick a one. time wipe, but also oh! a Kaya. So two of the strongest cards in the set. Take the time wipe, Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's like, can I splash this? <laughs> yes, you can. You can do it. Time wipe, highly splashable. One of the best rares in the set. But at the same time, Kaya means that Paulo doesn't necessarily have to commit to a third color. That's and right. Kaya, I believe, is one of the strongest uncommons yeah, in the set because yeah. it says six mana to kill two, thi <laughs> to kill two creatures. However, time wipe is... Basically, five mana, save your best creature, and wrath wipe Come out on, the Paolo. entire board. Paulo's deciding right now, am I an adult or not? <laughs> Look at this. Am I an adult? Am I going to make the adult <laughs> pick, or am I going to make the sweet pick? They're both good for his deck. Right. The, uh, the one other issue with Time Wipe, though, it wouldn't prevent him from playing it, is that he is really planning on being a heavily creature-based on-the-board deck, in which case, you know, Time Wipe takes a little bit of a hit. Yeah, but the thing is, traditionally, sweepers are not as great when you are trying to put yeah. a bunch of things on yeah, the battlefield. Yeah, he Oh, did but it. he's still going he for it. it. <laughs> but the upside for Time Wipe is so strong it's because, so again, absurd. you get to save your best creature. Oh, God. Good job, Paulo. a boy. He takes the Time Wipe. When in doubt, take the rare, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Drafting 101. Oh, another oh, Jian Yangu. Okay. Interesting. What are his other options? Well, if the splashing is going to continue, there's an Obnixilis' Cruelty uh, that, that you mentioned before. And an even Eternal just for some reason catches my eye because I think it's one of the better uncommons. There's a Crunch Wrangler, which he already has one of. I think he just takes the Jiang Yanggu Yeah, here. Jiang Yanggu just seems like the perfect type of card for what you're trying to do, especially in the specifically the green-white deck. I mean, there is a chance Paulo just wants to go kind of the four-color green deck and maybe not go all in on the, the proliferate strategy. Yeah. Because Obnixilis Cruelty is kind of the consensus best common in the set, just a, just a really, really strong removal spell. But at the same time, Jiang Yanggu just does so much work. Yeah. Also, yeah, I mean, I could see some really sweet sequences with this deck where he has creatures with plus one, plus some counters, but wants to, you know, pull his sweeper, and he could just tap them all for a bunch of mana, sweep the board, and just replay the one that he bounced. Right. One important thing now for Paulo's deck is he does want to make sure that he has a healthy number of two mana cards in his deck because, of course, Jung Yanggu, you need to have a creature in play to be able to actually put counters onto. Yeah, and look at this. It, it looks like he's doing exactly that, Paul. He's got worse creature pulled to the front of the pack. Yeah, with, it looks like Tyrant Scorn in that pack, which yes. is the most powerful card in the pack. Just a very, very powerful two-mana removal effect. Yeah. There, the Planeswalker in the pack was Dovin, but uh, Paulo didn't seem particularly interested in a Dovin for this build. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been especially impressed with Dovin. It just kind of slows the game down a little bit, I but mean, ultimately just... You, you designed it. It, like, it doesn't do a whole... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. Sorry, folks. Sorry, Dovin. <laughs> should, have, should have made, like, a Thopter or something. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys used that last set. Oh, you know, well, you, yeah. You, you, <laughs> right, right. We just couldn't do the same thing, so... Right. You don't want to run it back so quickly. Ooh, bad pack here, it looks like, unless I missed something. Oh, no, no. Th no. There's a Challenger Troll uh. and a Band together, I believe. Okay. okay. Great pack for a <laughs> Great pack. Take it back. Take it back. Yeah, they were just all at the back. So Challenger Troll, a nice, nice big curve to topper here. But, you know, I, I do wonder if Paulo really wants to try to get Band together, you know, as a removal spell and then try to work that curve down a little lower. No, yeah. no, he doesn't. He's going to go for it. I think Challenger board. Troll is just... Enough ahead on rate, which is why Paulo went for it. Because, you know, for five mana, getting a 6-5 with upside text is kind of a big deal. You know, it oftentimes is. you go, oh, it's just another five mana big creature. But no, this is, I think, enough above that for people to consider taking. But I do think that Band Together, one of the best commons. And also in Green White, you don't have removal. By the way, he just picked up one of the best possible commons for his deck here. Paul oh, Wright that Druid. is perfect. It's the absolute perfect card absolute for him. He, needed, he needs mana fixing for Time Wipe. Also wants a two drop for Jiang Yanggu, and this is probably the best two drop he can pick up. It is. Remember, he is going for a proliferate sub theme, or maybe even main theme, depending on how the rest of this uh, draft goes. And uh, Paradise Druid here is beautiful to just ramp this stuff out, get that stuff going, and then he can kind of move on from there. So really great stuff here for Paulo. A nice pickup. Yeah, pack two going really, really well. It looks like, uh, you know, he tried to cut off green in pack one, and he's, he is being rewarded. That's a fairly late Paradise Druid. Yeah. We also saw the pack, of course, before with the Challenger Troll and the band together, too. Was there another challenge? Oh, there's a Bloom Hulk in this oh, pack. Oh, wow. What, what else? I couldn't quite see the middle green card. Oh, that, was a, that was another Challenger Troll. It was, wasn't it? Right. 
But I actually but think... But Bloomhulk's just better here, I, right? I, I think Bloomhulk is mostly just better. Keep in mind, Paulo has two Jiang Yang Goos. Yeah. Bloomhulk is the perfect creature for his deck. Oh my gosh. Just curve one right into the next, Oh, huh? think about it. Two, two mana creature, three turn three Jiang Yang Goo into turn four Bloomhulk. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be really hard to come back from that. Yeah, Bloomhulk is what we call a pushed common, right? I mean, this yes. card is, you know, you read it and you're like, wait, what? Where's There's the nothing downside? bad here. Yeah, like this is all just can't, good can't stuff. block. Ooh, another Hwatley's Raptor oh in the pack goodness, here, too. Oh, my goodness. It's coming together so perfectly. That's another two-drop. His two-drops are double Hwatley's Raptor and Paradise Drew. Yeah, this is insane. Yeah. The uh, the Jang Yangus are going to have a lot of loyalty in this oh, deck man. as well. They're going to be happy. They're going to be very, very happy. And keep in mind, by the way, Jang Yangu also is a s source of mana fixing. Anything, any creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter can tap for any mana. Wow, this pack two has just been absolutely amazing for Paulo. Now yeah, we're watching the Hall of Famer in action, and uh, boy, he's doing it. War Screecher, or it looks like there was... A sideboard option for him, though he didn't end up taking it. Yeah, I think Paulo For here. Force landing, I think, was in the pack. Right, I think Paulo just locking up the the two mana slots. I mean, War Screecher, two mana, one three flyer. It's a fine card, fine. but but once you can put that counter on it, a two four flyer is a really big game. He's now just we're picking up some kind of probably not going to make the cut level cards here. Locks it on Sergeant. Fine. Yeah, but I mean, think about the cards that he picked up in this pack. I mean, we Bloom Hulk, Paradise Druid, Jiang Yang Gu, Time Wipe. Just everything is just a premium card yeah. that you want for this archetype. Oh, he got hooked up. No doubt about that. Here's Bond of Discipline. Not, not a card I'm a particularly big fan of. Yeah, I think it's the type of card that you play if you're aggressive and need a way to kind of close out the game, but oftentimes it just sits in your hand doing not a whole lot. Looks like he's got Thundering Ceratok there. Yeah, and a Ward Scale Crocodile, both just kind of, I would say, filler level five mana creatures. If you don't have anything better, you can just put them in your deck. Yeah, Ironclad Crovod is the last, uh, sec third to last pick here in this second pack, but as you said before, oh baby, this oh, yeah. pack was really nice for Paulo. And uh, he has ample mana fixing at this point to uh, to cast his his sweeper. You know, Paulo, one of those players who's who's been around the block. You know, he's played so many events, and every time you kind of go up to him and ask him how your deck is, he'll usually be like, eh, he'll find something wrong with his deck. Like, oh, I need another three job, I need whatever. Right now, yeah. it's I mean, this is this is just like an absolute pheno absolutely phenomenal start for this green white proliferate deck. Yeah, he has to be really excited about this. He's got a great curve. He's got bombs. Look at this. He's got a card called, called Crunch oh, Wrangler in I, his deck. Oh, you know deck. what? I completely forgot he had a Toll Smear in his deck, too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, course, yeah. Right? Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Toll Smear, Time Wipe. Now, what does he have as far as removal goes, though? Any? He, I think he had... He has none. Oh, he has Toll Smear, which is kind of a way to kill uh, some. And, okay. of course, Time Wipe. Is a mass removal spell. Yeah. But he doesn't have spot removal. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult when you're green white. But uh, actually, no, that's not even the case. It, white White's best cards are actually all removal effects in this format. Yeah. So you have, of course, you know, cards like Law Rune Enforcer. Wanderer uh, Strike. W yeah, Wanderer Strike. So he can pick those up. But yeah, he did have the uh, option of taking a band together at one point, but yeah. did choose to take the Challenger Troll. I think now he might be kind of thinking maybe I should have had the, the, the band together, but. Um, of course, Challenger Troll, again, just a, a fantastic rate creature. Yeah, Challenger Troll probably is the type of card in this deck where he can play it and almost win the game on the spot. Because of all the plus one, plus one counters and proliferate that he's got, right. he will so often have creatures that are power four or greater, even if they didn't start out that way. Yep, definitely. Wow, he has another pack to go. <laughs> like, I feel like he could build a solid 23-card deck with what he has here. Right, absolutely. And, and now cards Paulo, uh, Paulo's looking for outside of just, of course, bombs is just removal effects, interaction. You know, he's already got kind of the lower part of his curve set, you know, twos and threes, and, of course, some, so, some, some fat creatures in there as well. So, you know, if he does find something like a Wanderer Slash, which is perfect for this type of deck, not only does Paulo need removal, he also needs, he also wants proliferate effects. Let's see what he finds here. Oh, man, he opened Ral. Oh, there's a Sunblade Angel at Uncommon, though. A very uh, 
a, a great recipient for plus one plus one counters, right, shall we right, say? Right. <laughs> I mean, Sunblade Angel Not by that it it needs them exactly. Sunblade <laughs> Angel by itself, you know, six mana three three wall of text, but they're all good effects, of course. Um, yeah, and this is interesting because it looks like just based on power level, he really should just take the Sunblade Angel, but Paulo has Iron Bully pulled to the front as well because he really wants to prioritize creatures to get those plus one, plus one counters going. And it really would be powerful if he feels like his top end is enough and he wants to fill out the lower part of his curve, he could. But I'll tell you, the Sunblade Angel, like even with one plus one, plus one counter is almost impossible to deal with unless they have removal on the spot. Absolutely. And Iron Bully is kind of replaceable and you get it kind of, you tend to get it later. And also Paulo, uh, Paulo's top end, is he doesn't have a ton. He has zero six drops right now. So that is something that he can take. You know, Sunblade, you know, six mana cards is not something that you want to take you want to have too many of you know you want like one maybe two tops yeah this but deck could definitely do two right I mean, yeah with absolutely all the jang yangus and such yeah with the paradise druid he does have yeah. some ways to ramp as well right there's a oh. gideon's triumph oh wait was that a pledge of unity oh, oh pledge of unity. oh man but he's actually looking at the bloom hulk here perhaps just valuing the proliferate all over the place, but Pledge of Unity is your payoff. Right, absolutely. And of course, there's also even a, mo a Mobilized District, which is a card that you're happy having in a two-color deck, but I think the other two options are just too strong. They're just like not really replacement-level cards that you're just going to have to take one of them. So Pledge of Unity and Bloom Hulk, the options. And uh, yeah, Pledge of Unity, if you do have enough ways to proliferate, very, very strong effect. You know what? Even if you don't have ways to proliferate, if you just play creatures, this is an excellent combat trick. Yeah, this has to be one of the best possible cards for Paulo to pick up at this point, and uh, I'm surprised he didn't jump up and start screaming. But. <laughs> well, look, at, I mean, look at him. He's smiling. Right. He's like, this is sweet. Keep in mind, you know, Bloom Hulk is also, you know, exactly yeah. the, the, the type of creature that you want for this type of deck. But again, Pledge of Unity just that much better, and the ultimate payoff for being green-white proliferate. All right, here his choice looks to be Nahiri, Storm of Stone. He has a few other options, but Rally of Wings is not what you want. A War Screecher is, as you said, replaceable, and his twos are already quite strong. So it looks like Nahiri is where he wants to be. It is kind of a removal spell as well. Yeah, it's kind of a removal spell. I mean, the, the here is the type of card that you kind of want to play after your opponent attacks you, so you can actually get the minus effect. Because if she just kind of stays on the battlefield, your opponents often just won't attack until mm -hmm. they can get get in a good enough uh, attack in. But you know, it, it is a solid option for Apollo, especially because he is extremely light on removal right now. That's right. And you know, the first strike ability on these huge creatures that he's going to make is is not nothing, as right. we say in the business. Yes. In other words, it's something. Ooh, that's a removal effect. What, what was it? I that's, didn't see. It's a Law Rune Enforcer ah. here. And, and that's kind of a, another perfect card. It's a cheap creature for Jiang Yang Gu. And on top of that, this just allows Paulo to have ways to deal with big creatures. Now, the Elite Guard Mage is also a consideration because Paulo of, is, of course, going to be splashing that Time Wipe. And it actually combos very well with Time Wipe as well because you can bounce it, draw a card. You ooh, can just draw ooh, ooh, wait a all minute, the wait value. A <laughs> but I think Law Rune Enforcer is just exactly the type of card that Paulo wants for this deck. Perfect pickup, and he's going to make the Discipline pick and take the Law Rune Enforcer here. So you said he wanted removal. Well, he picked up N N N uh, Nahiri, Nahiri uh, into Law Rune Enforcer. So start checking those boxes. He could have used a Prison Realm or something. That would have been perfect, but whatever. Oh, and look at that. Evolution Sage. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. That is a late Evolution Sage, and that's just going to be perfect for Paulo's deck. Double Jiang Yang Gu, Pledge of Unity. What is going Proliferate on here? every single turn. For Paulo's deck. You know, maybe he doesn't want removal that much. And and, <laughs> I, and it sounds like a joke, but I actually mean it. Like, he needs to have as many creatures in this deck as possible. Like, I don't even know if I'd play Nahiri at this point. Right. You know, I just want to have all creatures, Jang Yanggu to pump them and Pledge of Unity and just go off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and just reserve those very few slots for non-creatures for really potent removal spells or something like that rather than... Uh, yeah. Planeswalkers that don't do quite as much. Even something like, if I have the choice between like an Iron Bully mm -hmm. and that Nahiri, I might just be playing the Iron Bully. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Like that, that's a great comparison there. So this is really interesting because Paulo has to decide how far to push that boundary, right? right. I mean, is there a world where Time Wipe isn't in his deck? No, I, th I think Time Wipe is just it's too just strong. too good. 
<laughs> to to not play be, because again, this it's not just your your typical run of the mill five mana sweeper. This allows you to save your biggest creature. So you know, oftentimes you can just put a little more pressure out on the battlefield, and it's harder to play around because you're going to put a bunch of creatures in play. Your opponent has to match that, and then you just get to save your biggest thing. Yeah, and it's so perfect for his deck as well because Jiang Yanggu puts counters on your creature, so you're right. kind of your one threat is ahead, 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 and it forces your opponent to uh, to match you. There's Vivian's Grizzly. Just a medium medium card here, but perhaps a place to put mana. And let's not forget that if the board does stall out a little bit, Paulo could have a lot of extra mana floating around thanks to Zhang Yang Gu. So. Yeah, yeah. Vivian's Grizzly is kind of, uh, I, again, yeah, a filler card. Yeah, filler is a good uh, way to put it. If you, if you expect a game, if you're playing against a slower deck, maybe I can see considering bringing it in. But, you know, you, your, your, your hit rate needs to be really high with that card because it's four mana and you just get to look at one card. Yeah. And even if your deck is almost all creatures, you're only going to hit half the time. Yeah. Is that another Sunblade yeah, Angel? Yeah, it is. It's a really late Sunblade Angel here for Paulo. So if he feels like that card, uh, you know, is the type of thing that he wants to do, and I'll be honest, it is, right? right? Like... A flying lifelinker, uh, there's a lot, a lot of other stats, but that you start putting counters on, especially with Vigilance, just means that your opponent can't ever win. And there's that Iron Bully that he has uh, gotten back on the wheel here, Paul. Yeah, and look, and look at this. Paulo just has multiple ways, many, a plethora of ways wow. to put plus one, plus one counters on his creatures, multiple ways to proliferate, pro, uh, proliferate with the Evolution Sage, the Bloom Hulk. I mean, he kind of has it all. Gideon's Triumph here. That is a card he can absolutely play, though I don't know if he will. Yeah. The The build on this is going to be really interesting because Paulo has shown some really good discipline, I think, throughout the course of this draft. Um, you know, taking some chances when it was warranted. The Tulsimir was kind of obvious, right? right? But, you know, that was a gold card. And then taking the time wipe as well uh, for taking a shot on such a super high power level card. Um, but also, he's been quite disciplined. You know, he's taken some of the cheaper options or the ones that are more on theme rather than the more obviously powerful ones. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to see how he puts these cards together because that is going to make a big difference. He has a synergy deck here. This is He actually kind of has the, be the best of both worlds. He has a very powerful deck, but it is based on plus one, plus one counters and proliferate. That's really what he's trying to maximize yeah. on. And, and, and when you do draft the green-white proliferate deck, what w one of the the biggest strengths for the archetype is you can actually have a strong functional deck with just all the commons, right? Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of synergies. You can build a good synergy deck. And Paulo not only has the, the good common synergy cards, he also has the bombs. Yeah. He has all the payoff cards. Keep in mind, double Watley's Raptor. On top of all the things that we've seen, right? On top of all the rares. So so I feel like he's not only has, you know, all the synergy cards, he's got the payoff cards at Uncommon, and then just the bombs up top with Time Wipe and that Tulsimir. Yeah, I... Look... Paulo is in a very difficult pot here. Right. Right. There's like five big name players that you can see just on that shot. Welcome back to the booth. But he has the tools to get the job done. He's the best player in the room. I mean, you know, he's he's one of the best players ever. Yeah, I mean, he's he, a top five player all time. So. Right. And he's certainly one of the most successful players of all time. So what that means is, well, you could put tools like this in his hand and he can certainly get the job. Oh, yeah. Done. I mean, he's got to be thrilled with the way this draft turned out. I mean, this is kind of one of the better. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of drafts. I've, I've done a few of the play design drafts, but uh, I mean, this is just yeah, this just looks like it has the tools for a 3-0. Yeah, I drafted this same archetype last night. It did not look <laughs> like this. And I thought it was fine. I right, did. Right. I was like, hey, this deck looks fine to me. All right, well, that's going to do it for our draft portion. We'll see you in just a little bit.